So to begin my low poly animal, I created a new 6x4 design, and I made sure I want really great resolution, um, so the raster effects are on high, and I renamed this layer Photo of Alaska. Now I want to add a new layer, so I can click the flyout menu, new layer, and I can call this polygons. Okay, so this is where we're going to be drawing our triangles. Okay, um, we're going to be using the pen tool to draw all of these. Um, I'll kind of start over here in the tail area at the beginning. Okay, so I have connected my three items. And for the fill, um, we can use the shortcut um, for the eyedropper. Okay, and we want to get one of those colors there. Okay, now on my keyboard, I'm just going to switch right back to the pen tool. So here's the way I like to do it. Um, now to start my second polygon, I feel it's easiest to click on an opposite corner. Then you can join the others. Okay, I am my keyboard. I can just click I. Okay, and I can just fill that in right there. So now I want to go and add a third triangle here. So again, instead of starting here to connect it, I want to start over here on this end, and then I, and then I can get a different color for that. Some of my favorites are also where you can see the, um, the outline of the design. So in other words, fill the image up, fill the cat Alaska up with the polygons, but leave the background. Okay, so again, so I'm going to go right back to my pen tool, um, and then I'll show you how we can do this if we are connecting. Um, so again, just starting out, we want to make sure that the fill is empty, um, and I like to use the stroke of 0.25 somewhere in there. Now these, I'm not going to fill them in, and I'll show you how we can fill them in a little bit later. Now if we want to go ahead and connect this, see here where it turns to a little minus? So if I click that, that's going to delete the anchor point, which is what I don't want. So another option we have is you can click, hold the shift key, and then that will allow you to connect these back to each other. And from here, you always want to make sure that you can see that circle. And that way you know that it is connected together. So I'll show you if we want. So again, if I was going to click here, it would erase it. So instead, I want to hold the shift key down. Now another trick, um, hold on, hit escape. Another thing I like to do is also go back and make sure that you can fill these in individually. Okay, so literally, like after every five or six um, ones that I do, I'll go back and even just fill it in with just a plain color just to make sure that my polygons aren't connected within each other. Sorry, that should be a fill. Okay, so right now I know that these are going good. So again, you always want to check that every couple steps to make sure that your polygons are looking really good. Uh, another thing that we can do, and I'll show you again in a couple of minutes, is we can hide the background layer of Alaska and make sure that these appear good. So again, I can go back later and fill them in, or I can kind of do it step by step. So again, so I can click here to make sure kind of those join, and then I'm going to make sure I have that circle there, so that way I know that it connects. Okay, so now when I'm ready to start my next polygon, again, I want to start over here by itself. Then I can go and connect them. So once you kind of get the hang of that, then again, it's a little bit easier to kind of go step by step. Again, over here, I want to 
make sure that my polygons are touching each other and they're not overlapping. So again, um, every couple steps I can go back, I can make sure that we can fill these in. So if I had a little bit more done, again, I think it's easiest to do this on your keyboard and just kind of swap between um, the eye tool and the fill so I can um, choose my fill color. However, I can't sample Alaska's fur underneath if it is locked. So when you get ready to look at your colors um, to fill that in, um, you want to make sure that that is unlocked for you. See, so it's going to take too long for me to move my mouse around um, so or to um, go up here and click the item. So again, I think it's easier just to use your little keyboard shortcuts. Okay, V to select it. I for the eyedropper tool and then it's filled in. Now I can just click V to select this one. I, give it a color. Go back for V to select it. I to fill that in. V to select it. I for the eyedropper. And so on. So to review, um, it's pretty easy to just draw a random item. So again, if I want to connect here, um, I would probably start over here by itself. Um, but if I want to connect these three, see how it's going to turn into a minus sign. I want to hold the shift key down so I can make sure I'm clicking right on that anchor point. Okay, and again, make sure we see that circle so we know it is connecting. Holding the shift key. Okay, and finally I've got another one down here. So I already have all three of these done, so I'm going to hold the shift key for here. And if you notice, you can see how the, um, the white box And when you get to the part on the eyes, um, you can make the triangles, but sometimes it may be a little bit better to go ahead and do a circle. So again, I can jump over here to my layers. I was not paying attention on this one, so I put these on the wrong layer. Um, so all that means is I just need to go back um, and delete these. And next time, remember to be very careful with that step. Yeah, if you keep it locked, you won't make that mistake. Um, but then when it's locked, you can't sample um, the polygon, so it kind of works both ways. Now, sometimes if you're trying to do this where you don't see the background, um, it can get um, a little bit tricky. Technically, you really probably don't want to actually move the triangles, but as you saw, I was able to do that really quick. And again, um, we know we've gone over this before, um, but then you can just select that one section and click I for the eyedropper. Um, go back on my keyboard and I can just click V, move my mouse over, because again, that's going to be a lot faster than going back and forth um, to drive your mouse all the way over to the eyedropper to pick your fill color. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of trouble making this one. And again, what's really helpful is if I hide my background layer, now I can look and see, okay, wait a minute, this triangle here um, is not really working at all. Um, so sometimes you'll just have to go back and forth through these a couple of times. Um, and then if you need to, you may just have to erase that one polygon um, and then go back with the pen tool and try it in a different location. Okay, so I've drawn a lot more. So again, every couple steps, it's nice to go toggle each one of them on and off and make sure you're on the correct layer and that these are working as you wish um, and we'll kind of speed this up a little bit and then I'll kind of show you how you can do some of your eyes at the end. You can also zoom in a lot so let's kind of look and see where we are now. So if I hide the background, okay I've got these and if you notice this one here is actually not touching that one. 
Okay, um, so now I'm trying to fill these in and I can't because what has happened is I've made all mine, but I forgot to add a couple of these. So now I, all I need to do is go back to the pen tool. Okay, and again, make sure that the circle appears. Um, so that way we know that we have made a complete shape that we can fill in. Now, if you notice what I accidentally did is it was already on a fill color. Um, so I want to go back and make sure that I um, go back with my fill color um, and make sure that I'm able to use the eyedropper tool exactly on that one. And also for the eyes, what I found out through kind of trial and error is you don't want to maybe start like right in the center of the eye because maybe that's where your, um, your tension goes. Um, so for me, I'm going to go back in at the end and actually just make a circle for the eye. So I've just about finished. I can see my cat. Now if I turn off the background, I've even got my low poly animal. Um, the last thing I want to do is I want to just go ahead and add a layer for the eyes. Okay, I'll turn that off. Um, and again, I'm going to make sure I'm on the eyes layer. So again, typically we would do these. Um, with the triangles, but for this, especially with the cat, I think I just really need the, the outline of the eyes. Okay, and then I go in, I'm oh, sorry, I should have started with my fill color on empty. Um, fill those in and then add a little bit for the pupil. One of the last things I want to do is to go in and maybe clean up any loose um, objects that I have. So I'm going to go to, there it goes. I'm going to go to object, path, and clean up. So I'm going to want to delete all of the stray points and any empty text paths um, to make sure that that looks really good. Um, also in here, I did add a couple of claws. Um, so that's kind of up to you if you want to do a little something like that um, to make it a little bit more realistic. Um, and I may take those off because I originally had those because I had some of the fur going outside. Um, so it's up to you if you want to keep the background picture or not. Um, and that is our low poly animal.